How am I now? Ah. How you doing? Yeah. Good morning. Thank you all for, for being here. Uh, welcome to worship. If you're visiting today, it's good to see some visitors. That makes my heart happy. And we got some uh, people from up north back again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see y'all. Uh, just a few announcements before we get started. Um, we have, uh, uh, today is focused on the blessing of the animals in honor of St. Francis. Um, and so you'll hear more about that, experience that later in worship. Uh, but also, um, we want to keep in our hearts and minds today, anyone who has experienced uh, the tragedy of Hurricane Helene and pray in advance uh, for the hurricane that is uh, coming up this week. Lots to pray for and keep in our hearts today. Um, the... Uh, the Lamb of God board decided to do a match program of up to $10,000 for hurricane relief. Uh, there's a couple weeks if we're going to do that. So if you feel called uh, to help, we're going to match you as a church up to $10,000. So that's exciting. Uh, the only way to ease hurricane relief is through generosity. And that's how we do this. So thank you so much for those of you who have contributed or will contribute um, devastation, but this helps a little bit to make things a little bit better for people around the country and here in, in Florida. So uh, in, in, in light of that, make sure that you know that we do have a, a crisis relief fund in addition to these funds. This is being sent uh, to the larger church to help uh, in, in areas of need, but locally as a church, we do have a crisis relief fund available. If you need any help or assistance after the hurricane, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, and even during the hurricane, I got a four-wheel drive pickup if you need water. Water, just let me know. Give me a call, and we'll make we'll get you the help that we need as best we can. Um, in other news, uh, our Faith in Action um, partner this month for October is FK Your Diet. It's a restaurant across the street, um, and we are they are collecting duffel bags and backpacks for foster kids. Um, and there's a bin in the lobby for that. Um, and we get, we get uh, excited to help out with the folks at FK Your Diet and provide in that way. Also on Sunday, October 13th, uh, there is a, um, a blessing of the children in uh, the vineyard right after we'll worship. This is next Sunday. Uh, the kids will be with us in worship. They'll sing a little song, do a little presentation, a lot of fun, a lot of joy, a lot of, a lot of celebration happening in worship next week. And then we'll mosey over to the uh, vineyard and bless the new space there. We got a nice new floor, nice new lights. The place looks great. We'll do a blessing after worship with them uh, next week. We look forward to that. Also coming up on the horizon, um, October 23rd, that's a Wednesday, they're doing a tailgate potluck. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure that's on your calendar, you're going to want to be here. There's a few people from the uh, spring, uh, the Bonita Spring Concert Band going to be here. We're going to sing some fight songs together uh, and wear our team colors, do some school spirit pride. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. So make sure you're here for that uh, and you can bring a dish to, to share for that as well. Also, uh, choir practice, just FYI, begins October 16th at 4 p.m. Anybody's welcome uh, to join in the choir, and they'll start performing shortly after that. We look forward to them uh, having them with us in worship and sharing their musical gift with us. Uh, Reformation Sunday is October 27th. We invite everybody to wear red that day, celebrate the Reformation. That's a really busy day for us. We're also going to start the Living the Questions uh, series. It's a video series. Um, that starts on Reformation Sunday. That starts at 8.45 a.m. It's a good time for us to not only worship together, but to, but to, get, but to be together early in the morning and uh, conversate, discuss, uh, think about good questions that are worth engaging, and we get to learn more about each other through all that. So hopefully you're excited about that. I, I certainly am. And it's going to be a good time. There's going to be also good coffee there as well. So that's a good reason to get, come as well. That's October 27th is when that begins. Um, also, All Saints Sunday is around the corner, November 3rd. Um, you're invited to um, share the names of anyone in your family who you've lost, um, and we will, um, we will commemorate them in worship on All Saints Sunday. That's November 3rd. If you could get those names to Wendy by October 23rd. And um, also, keep going with announcements. Sorry, I keep bouncing around there at Wendy. Um, new member class is uh, October 27th as well. Uh, new members will be received uh, on that Sunday as well, and there's a class right after. That's open to anybody. If you feel like you want to have a better understanding of the inner workings of the church, you're welcome to come to that. That's on Reformation Sunday after worship at 11. All right? And then, I think that is it. 
by way of announcements. We also have turkeys outside in the narthex. If you feel called to help our Feeding the 5,000 ministry, that's coming up right around the corner. We thank you to anybody who contributes to make that ministry happen. All right. With that being all the announcements, would you please stand as you're able for our call to worship? Across time and place, people of faith have gathered to praise God's holy name. May God teach us to be thinkers, seekers, and truth tellers as we acknowledge the love that is present all around us. May God continue to be revealed to us through worship, prayer, song, and in service to others. Our faith grows today as we praise the one who calls us, Jesus Christ, who is worthy to be praised. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in living community with one another. Form us for a life of faithfulness and steadfastness, and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated this morning as we turn to Scripture. The first reading is from Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground that the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal in the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up in its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one has taken. 
Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they became one flesh. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world, about which we are speaking, to angels. But someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subject subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God we may taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sacrifices and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this, the beginning of creation made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then, in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, 
the little children, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable today. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. This is a hard gospel today. If you were listening, there's a lot of, um, a lot of people have been hurt by this gospel for sure, talking about divorce. And um, I was at a ministerial meeting on Thursday, and we're, we're talking about what we are going to preach about, and there are six of us gathered, and actually two of the six were preaching on this gospel. The other four said, we're not going to preach on it. Interesting, I thought. You know, and boy, they had good reasoning. I understood, you know. Uh, the gist of the criticism was, I think that the, the ancient world, the first century world in which this gospel was written, it's t- the historical context is too unfamiliar it's too different. People can't comprehend or understand, so they can't handle it. And, you know, I, I totally understood. And I totally get the abuse and the, 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 the problems that we've had as a church of people misunderstanding the spirit in which this gospel and Jesus is speaking. Um, the, you could trace this gospel, by the way, all the way back to the creation of the Anglican church. Uh, King Henry V uh, wanted to, to, to maintain his relationship with the Catholic, Catholic Church, but they wouldn't, the Pope wouldn't let him get an annulment, and so his response was to create the Anglican Church. I mean, they used this gospel, it was very important back then, and it shaped a trajectory of creating a whole denomination, right? Just because of this gospel text and people's uncomfortableness of thinking about the nature of divorce and understanding uh, the his- or the lack of understanding of the historical context in which this was written. So let me just briefly catch you up so you're up to speed because I think we can handle it. I don't think everything in the Bible is meant for us to read and go, yep, sign me off. I think that sounds great. I don't think that is necessarily everything in the Bible. I can name a long list of things that I'm uncomfortable with in the Bible. This is among those things. That's okay. We can still learn from it without necessarily affirming what it says, especially an inaccurate interpretation of what it says, right? So let me just quickly fill you up to speed of what uh, the the historical context was in Jesus' time. This is a very, very patriarchal society, Right, and so women were uh, their worth, their status, their wealth was caught up in and tied to their husband. Right, and so if you got a divorce in the first century world, actually the woman couldn't get a divorce; it was the man who was divorcing the wife. If that were to happen to you, if you are a woman living in the first century world, it's not a pleasant experience at all. You let's say you got divorced in the first century, you are then receiving a sentence of poverty, because your wealth, again, was tied to your husband, and there you could not remarry, right? And so what men were doing back then is they were casting these women aside. Your options after you get divorced in this time was to literally starve or probably go into a life of prostitution out of necessity, Right? And so what men were doing here, and this is what Jesus is so angry about, is men were tossing aside their wives, getting the divorces all the time, right? But the relationships then, especially marriages, are nothing like the relationships they are today. It's not predicated on love. It's predicated on property and ownership. A huge fundamental difference. And in order for you to understand this gospel and for us to bring about the good news in this gospel or to understand the light that it gives us, we have to understand that historical context. There's a lot of people who use this passage 
for especially in the church, to continue to be abusive or to make people feel shamed about getting something like a divorce. This is not Jesus advocating that we should remain in abusive relationships. That's not what this is. It's actually quite the contrary. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees at the time, these men who are trying to catch Jesus in a trap. They're testing Jesus. And so they go up to Jesus, these Pharisees, or the religious elite is another name for Pharisees. They go up to Jesus and they're trying to test him. And so they asked him the the hot button cultural topic of his time. Are Are we allowed to divorce our wives? This was clearly a a hot topic in the first century world. It's what they were arguing about. It was a a cultural uh, phenomenon that was going on where men were divorcing their wives and sentencing them to a life of poverty. And Jesus is trying to get us to understand his whole point is that Jesus is the least of these. Jesus has come to give good news, to walk alongside and accompany the marginalized, the neglected, the poor, the women in these stories. Jesus is for those who are powerless, those who we cast aside as a society. Now, thank God we don't treat divorced people like that today. Some churches, that's still around. It seems so archaic to me. I don't understand it. I'm not going to try to understand it, but it just, it, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, what are we doing? Why? I mean, annulments, things like annulments are still around. It seems so archaic to me. Or I wake up sometime and I'm like, is the church, did you know that more churches than not today, more denominations than not, don't ordain women? Did you know that today? I wake up and I'm like, what? And you think you're going to survive as a church and you're not going to ordain women? Not even survival. It's not even at all the spirit of what Jesus is trying to do. It happens more often than you think that we read passages in the Bible without absorbing what it's saying. Without putting Jesus' teachings and ministry and lessons to his disciples in the entire work of 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 the work of the body that Jesus is presenting, his entire body of work, his entire curriculum, right? It's so easy to cherry pick this and that and not let the gospel truly absorb in our hearts. It's really hard. That's a criticism of worship too, by the way. Often we pick out, we we, the le- not me, but the lectionary, they pick out, they cherry pick gospels that, to read on Sunday morning, and everybody reads the Bible one snapshot at a time, and very f- rarely do people actually sit down and read, for example, the entire book of Luke all at once. Go home and do that. It's not very long. It won't take you very long. Read the entire book of Luke and tell me the themes that arise after that experience promise you it's going to be themes like inclusion by helping the least of these by caring for the 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 neglected and the marginalized in society and this today's gospel it is divorced women jesus often talks about uh children because they literally literally are the powerless in his day and age right and today we ask ourselves that same question Who are the least of these, and how is God calling us to advocate for them, to walk alongside them, and share the good news to them? Sometimes it's helpful, especially in gospel stories like this, it's helpful to zoom out and take a bird's eye view of what Jesus is saying. This ultimately, in my mind, this gospel story is ultimately about maintaining healthy and positive relationships with people, no matter who you are, no matter what the context is, even in divorce situations, right? Even in all kinds of the complexity of our relationships, and indeed our relationships are complex and tricky and hard to navigate. In the midst of that human struggle, Jesus is an advocate for maintaining healthy, life-giving relationships with everyone in our lives. It is not an easy task. And I'm guilty. Here's what I'm guilty of. Maybe you can resonate with this or not. I have a pretty good 
I can name a one or two people in my life who I've like broken ties with, not very many. And what my problem is, though, is not necessarily that I have a ton of broken relationships in my life. What I do is, in order to not have broken relationships, I don't enter into deep relationships at all. Right? I don't want to get to know you because I'm afraid if I do, you'll reject. I don't know if that rings a bell for anyone here today. Jesus is calling us especially in the life of the church, to bring our fullest expression of who we are to this place. You have a responsibility and obligation to bring yourself to this community, and the church has a responsibility and obligation to love whatever is presented. See, our relationships with each other is correlated to our relationship with God. If we have corrosive and toxic, toxic relationships in our lives, odds are we're going to have corrosive and a toxic relationship with God. And it's a two-way street. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying put up with abuse. Please don't hear me say that. But we have to acknowledge we are in a world filled with division in a context in which Having an unhealthy relationship is not that difficult. If you say one wrong thing, it cascades. Do one wrong thing, then you, it, 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 it snowballs, right? We here, as followers of Christ, are committed to the work of loving people for who they are, and we are quick to forgive when they offend or upset. That's what a healthy relationship is all about. Because the relationship that I have with you, that we have with each other, is worth the struggle, right? And if you've ever been in a marriage, especially a marriage that's uh, lasted a long time, you'll understand this very well, right? It's not necessarily about loving or affirming or being supportive of everything that your partner does. Certainly not, right? It's about walking alongside them in the midst of who they are, loving them because of their mistakes, not despite them, right? That's what being a loving community, the church is all about. So if you hear nothing else today, I want you to hear the church affirm who you are. I don't, it, it, it is beside the point, your divorce status or your history in that department. It is beside the point the things that you think prevent you from knowing and experiencing God to the fullest, that's not what this is about. This is about saying God loves you no matter who you are. God loves you despite whatever you've been through. God is supporting you, rooting for you to mend the broken relationships in our lives because it has to do with our soul. It has to do with how we view and live in the world. Jesus concludes this gospel by inviting us to live like little children. I want you to imagine for me a second. This is sort of odd to think about, but I want you to imagine with me for a second. What would the institution of the church look like if it was run by children? What would it look like? Think about, play that out for a moment. It would be a lot more fun probably, right? A lot more fun. A lot more kindness, I'm willing to imagine. A lot more people quick to forgive and move on. Little kids have a hard time holding grudges, right? It would be a world where we would share. And it's in that naivete that God is calling us to build the kingdom of God. It's in that innocence. It's in that sweetness. It's in that joy-filled place that God calls us into, to let go of the hate, to let go of the judgment, to let go of all that stuff that the church has told you is important that is not. To cling to nothing else, to stand firmly on nothing else, but love for one another. That is what the gospel is all about. That is the spirit in which this gospel is told. I invite you 
to cling to the God that is working and living in this place and in this world and in your relationships to bring about wholeness, peace, and love. With St. Francis on our hearts, let us turn to prayer. Challenged by God's word in Christ to care for all creation, we pray for wisdom and inspiration. Artistic God, we give thanks for your creation in every time and place. May we listen for the prophets of this age who bear messages to call us towards renewal and justice. We give thanks for the legacy of St. Francis and Asais who called us to live as a witness to the gospel in the ways that we create the earth, its environment, and every living thing within it. God of grace. Amazing God. Direct our lives towards the renewal, sustainability, and safekeeping of livestock, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. Reveal the ways we can work alongside creation for the health and well-being of all. Send your blessings to the animals that we and other animals consume for nourishment. As we seek abundant life, teach us to respect the lives we take away for our benefit and survival. God of grace. Awesome God, send your blessing to animals that work to bring healing and wholeness to those who are sick, suffering, or limited in physical capabilities. Bless dogs that go into hospitals, nursing homes, and provide a service of accompaniment for those in need. Bless canines that accompany emergency responders. Bless all animals that live to serve others. Bless pets who have died but continue to live in our hearts and remain a source of our joy. Today, we also bless the people we now name silently or aloud that need your presence and accompaniment. God of grace. Affectionate God, humans were created for relationships with the earth, its creatures, and one another. Forgive us when division threatens companionship, mutual support, and unity among us. 
May your love inspire us to build supportive relationships, both with people and all of creation. Convict us when we fall into apathy, shelter us from our selfishness, and inspire us to use our intelligence to heal all that is broken and bring restoration to what we have damaged. Through you, all things are possible. God of grace. Today and every day, we pray that pets everywhere continue to be a source of unconditional love and signs of your presence in our lives, which lasts forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another. All right. As I mentioned, today is, um, we are commemorating St. Francis, um, who, will, um, who is notorious for loving on animals and all of creation. So we have a special presentation today uh, to commemorate St. Francis and all our furry friends, of, all our pets of every kind. And so I thought it would be fun to um, share a little bit about, about that. If you're a child, you're already in the front row, you can hit or sit with me and we can watch this video together. What do you think? Sound good? All right. It's okay, give me a thumbs up when you're ready. We do a lot of different things for uh, St. Francis, the best children of the blessing. Last year we did a food truck and we had people bring their friends with us. That was a lot of fun. Uh, this year we're making a, a video we'll share with you after worship as well and now if we can get it going. But um, just look, be on the lookout for that. You could share it with folks. Uh, I thought this was cool because um, it's inclusive, you know, of people. Everybody can pitch in and bring a video. And if you want to add to it, there's certainly no end to this. So if you forgot or, or didn't get an opportunity, you can send those in. Okay.
right. All right. So, kiddos, we're going to say a blessing. Everyone's going to help me do this. Repeat after me, okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Lord, bless all our pets. Lord, bless all our pets. And every living creature. And every living creature. May, we May we always praise you. For the beauty of creation. The beauty of creation. In the name of the Father. And the, Son, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good job, guys. Good job. We'll continue with our offering. stand as you're able. God of all creation, comfort those who have been left homeless or are in shock in the wake of Hurricane Helene. Open our ears to all the cries of affliction and through us provide healing and help for all those in need. Lord, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from, bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we may be for the world signs of your gracious presence in our lives. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to sing with me the creed.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us a way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Santo, 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 mi corazón te adora, mi corazón te sabe decir, Santo eres Señor. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave to all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us our daily really bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is set, the feast is prepared, all are ready, you may be seated.
for those with us remotely, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and this cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth, powered by your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able for this blessing today. Uh, may God be with all of you this week as you're hunkled down or traveling or whatever your plans are. Know that the church is here for you. If you need anything, please reach out, okay? God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. bound together go into the world boldly intentionally and joyfully amen, amen.